it never fails on a Friday for <laughs> Sinead DeFries to break fourth wall and giggle into the microphone before you actually see my hideous face. Guys, I'm Josh McCuga. Collider TV talk on a Sinead Friday. Always here, uh, 11 a.m. PST live every single day. Listen, next week I'm only here Monday, Tuesday, and then I'm gone for two and a half weeks for my wedding and then honeymoon. So uh, that's that's my, that's I did it again. <laughs> it's three out of five this week, guys. Three out of five. I'm crushing it in a big Dan Harmon beard behind me. I just noticed that on the camera. Um, but John Roca will be here. All this, all the, all our usual fun and everything, just hosted by John Roca. Grace Hancock will be here. Sinead DeFries will be here. Emma Fife, David Griffin, everybody all along. So uh, thank you guys for all your well wishes on my soon to be nuptials and. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, to say the least, but I, we have some TV to talk about today. And I mentioned her before uh, at least twice already. She's here wearing all Pittsburgh colors, and I'm so excited. Sinead DeFries. Look at her. Hey She's glorious. She's uh, perfect. I didn't mean to actually wear Pittsburgh colors just so we're all clear here. <laughs> Um, because yeah, you, you did just for me, and I appreciate that, Sinead. Like, I appreciate it. I just have very bad feelings towards um, Pittsburgh and that side when it comes to sports. Not uh, even for football, but uh, just because of the Blackhawks, uh, <laughs> really. Yes, yes. So I don't like to support them in any way. No offense. <laughs> I really just don't like to put that kind of energy out there. Um, but yeah, I'm here. And also, the only reason I started giggling is because Josh McCuga was picking eye boogers out of his eye yep. three <laughs> seconds before the cameras went on. And it was hilarious. Like, absolutely hilarious. How I tried very hard not to laugh, yep. but you were really going to town over yep. there. Yeah, sometimes I get some big ones in there. Oh, uh, and here, and here, gross. <laughs> Tell you who's not gross, our mother of ginger dragons. That's Grace Hancock. Oh, hey guys, welcome to. Oh, thank you. Stop. Uh, what is it? Scintillating Fridays? Scintillating Fridays. Scintillating Fridays here on. On uh, Collider TV Talk, we're all trying to open our eyeballs. Tweet me your good Twitter questions, guys. Don't disappoint me. It's good. been a long ass week. At Mrs. Grace Face, hashtag Collider TV Talk. Nailed it. Um, so we got a, a full day here, a bunch of news, no real shows. I know a lot of you were kind of asking if we were going to talk about Gotham. Here's what I'm going to do I'm going to try and binge as many episodes of season three of Gotham. And then try and get into season four. So maybe by like week six, we can start talking about Gotham on a Thursday. At least I can. I'm not going to force Grace and Sinead to watch it um, because I'm their friend and not a, a person with a whip that says, Gotham, Gotham. Oh, so good. don't don't worry <laughs> about that. We, we already have enough to watch as is. And the fact that Sinead wore black and yellow today, I can't tell her to do anything ever again. She's just <laughs> she's just perfect. There it is. All right, Grace, what's first? All right, so guys, Dan Harmon has no time for misogynistic bullshit. Rick and Morty creator Dan Harmon went off on trolls yesterday who've been harassing the female members of their writer's room. So for season three, they finally balanced their writing team with a lot of women joining, and trolls have been harassing them online as well as leaking their personal information. Yikes. What the actual hell? And I appreciate the fact that Dan Harmon came out and just basically said, I don't have any time for this misogynistic bullshit. And the fact that there are probably a lot of trolls that watch Rick and Morty. Sure. It's a very popular show, and it's a very popular show amongst an internet-based crowd. Right. Right? And the fact that we actually have to put up with this kind of stuff and that there is a community that rewards this behavior is an absolute travesty. And, and when it comes to television and for us to enjoy a show, here's the thing. I've worked in a couple writers' rooms before. I've been lucky enough to do that. Um, and the writing process is very, very communal. Right. You are given one yeah. episode to write. You bring it back. You read yeah. it. People give you notes. You come back. But the most of the bulk of the actual writing, the tick, 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 is you. Hence the writing credit. But the actual ideas, jokes and everything that's being put forth in an episode, it's a community effort. Mm -hmm. So if you think that the woman just wrote the Pickle Rick episode, which, by the way, is one of my favorite Rick and Morty's ever. The man turns himself into a pickle. It's incredible. Uh <laughs> And you think just a female wrote that, you are a moron. And you're also a moron for releasing people's personal information. You're a terrible human being for attacking women, men, anybody in general, about their job. You're, you're, ju you're just terrible for doing that. Do I sometimes make wisecracks about people doing stupid stuff on TV? Of course I do. But I don't attack them personally. I don't attack them on social media. I don't release their personal information. I don't attach them for being their gender. There's a way to do this, people. There's a way to be a critic and, and opinionated. And there's a way to be an asshole. And there's don't be that second. Yeah. And we thing. have we have real problems going on in the world. We have hurricanes. We have earthquakes. Yes. There's real things happening and uh, I mean leaking personal information is so 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 dangerous and so scary to me. Yeah. Um, and for, and I can't, for somebody this like is just you, despicable Sinead, on every level. And us that we're always in the public eye, I'm sure you've had to deal with something like this. Getting hacked, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it happens to me 
Um, actually, more times than I like to admit because it makes me feel so violated. Mm -hmm. But the last time it happened was just a couple weeks ago. My Snapchat was hacked. And that's the third time my Snapchat's been hacked. And the worst part about it is I don't even care if people hack apps and stuff like that. Like, whatever. You post something, I can delete it. It's fine. But somebody was trying to hack into my Apple account. And it was like three days of sheer torture because mm -hmm. I could not for the life of me figure out how they were doing it. I would change my password back. And as I was changing it, um, I would get an email that's like, Somebody's it, trying to log in. Well, it's, it'll say like, thank you for changing your password. And it'd be great. And then two minutes later, it'd be like, thank you for changing your password. <gasps> it was, I was like in tears. That happened, I think a while I was pregnant, actually it happened. And I was obviously way more emotional than pro than I should have been, Just, but I felt so violated. So this is disgusting. I don't understand how people think that this is okay. I just like over a cartoon episode, people like, yes, it, it was a great episode. Like I can't yeah, even, I can't even right. like, I feel bad even giving them this much time. But like, I, yeah. And I appreciate, I appreciate Dan Harmon kind of stepping up and, yeah. and yeah. I think more people in positions of power should be stepping up to this kind of thing and worrying less about certain other things that I really won't get into. Right. Grace. Um, all right, so moving along. Uh, SAG-AFTRA is sending a team to the set of Riverdale in Vancouver um, after KJ Apa fell asleep at the wheel and crashed his car into a lamppost after working a 14-hour day earlier this week. Um, he was unharmed. Production has not halted. Um, I'm a SAG-AFTRA member. I'm, I don't really know what they're hoping to accomplish by sending this team up there because it's like he was tired and he fell asleep at the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what they're going to go look at, like the scene of the crime. There's no crime. Like I'm not really sure what they're hoping to accomplish other than looking good. I think um, the reason that we should talk about this, though, right, is that I think a lot of people out there that watch television shows and that watch movies don't realize how long a day the crew puts in, the stunt people, the makeup people, PA, crafty, all these people work longer hours than the actors. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that being an actor is an easy job. It, it, being on set that long should not be a thing, right? right. And the fact that a, a bunch of drivers have died in either Atlanta or Vancouver, right. stunt people have died. Mm -hmm. People have died falling asleep at the wheel after a long hour for a television show. This isn't saving lives as a doctor. Right. This isn't, you know, uh, being the president of the United States. This isn't a job that is, that is like, world changing right yes entertainment can be a very very good thing for people in need you need entertainment that's why it's always existed but the fact that we are putting people through 18 and 19 hour days for television shows is an absolute joke it shouldn't happen right. it, there's got to be some way to to do this with either multiple cameras shorter days and more of them uh the fact that actors are on set for six months and don't get to see their family can't leave can't do this stuff that they're working it, there has to be something done by if your union is representing you your union is representing you in your best interest. They're not doing their job if you're working 18, 19 hour days. There's gotta be a way they can budget. There's gotta be a way that there's gonna be back end. There's other ways that this can be done because for us to sit around and say that an 18 hour day is okay for t a television show and a movie, it's a joke. That's yeah. not, that's not fair. It's not fair. Yeah, I mean, it is crazy. I mean, I've never not worked a 16 hour day it's on any ridiculous. show I've been on. Like, and that's ever. ridiculous. Yeah, and it is, but, I, but again, we talked about this off air. I really don't know what the solution is because it's such a budget problem. Like, I don't know how to have, like, you can have a whole other crew with my stand in setting up the next shot, but then that's the budget for a whole other crew. So it's like a shorter day, but twice the people, like, I'm not sure, you know, this is definitely not something that I would know how to fix, but. I mean, he, I guess they were saying that, like, you know, he could have gotten a car. I, mm. It's not his fault. It's not like he's like, I feel like I could fall asleep at the wheel. I should take a car. Like, he was obviously right. like, no, I'm fine. I'm going to go. Like, and for all I know, he's like a very nice, like, cool kid. Like, this wasn't his fault or anything like that. But I mean, Falling I don't know. Falling asleep at the wheel is your... a real thing. It's a real thing. Your yeah. body goes into shutdown mode. It does. Right. You yeah. need sleep. But it's not like he could have known that he was going to do that. But you what know? I'm, like... I'm not saying that the problem is with him or I know, driving. I know. I'm saying there is a legitimate problem in filming that this is a, a fear that people have to do this. Right. Sunae, what do you think? Okay, so the commute home for him is 45 minutes. So mm -hmm. when he left the set, he could have been telling the absolute truth, like to himself, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm all good. Um, but I know that this has incited a lot of anger amongst their entire cast because these guys are absolutely connected at the hip. It's like the cast has become best friends and right. I think that they're all really upset about this because they didn't understand why he was working such a long day in the first place. Right. And obviously that was never the intention. It, it ran late. Like I remember when I was filming like Nickelodeon and just like 
that was a 30 minute little comedy, right? With like six commercial breaks and how every day on set we would run over over time. It happened Always. without and a doubt. And you're on a pre-lit set with four cameras. Yeah. And like 75 people yes. <laughs> working in that crew. It was insane. The show had been on for like six years. It shouldn't be a thing. It's, it, I mean, it, it is what it is. The only way that, that SAG is going to get themselves out of this string of really bad incidents that's honestly making them look like crap. Terrible. Yeah. Um, is Losses. to is to put more money into the budgets of their of their um their Productions. filming, yeah. like their filming schedules. Like you have to put more money specifically to that. Can we budget to have these people come two weeks longer so that you can get out of there sooner? Because obviously I don't think that they are just I don't think the people on the show, the directors, the producers, whatever, WB is like disregarding the fact that people have right. to sleep, right? right? I think it's like something they can't freaking help. It gets like late at night and they're like, yeah. shit, we're not done. Right. Like we have to finish this today because next week, tomorrow, yeah, we're deadlines. going there or whatever. So it sucks, but I mean, this is a very bad year for SAG-AFTRA and- um, It's a legitimate problem. I'm it's sorry. It's a really like, bad problem. You know, if you if you were, I work construction for a lot of years, right? If you are up against the deadline, you have to finish it, you work the long hours. And I understand that they're up against the deadline, mm -hmm. but you also have directors like, we need to get coverage, you need to get a close up, we need to get this. You don't need those shots. If you're going over, you get rid of the shots. Right. You just do it. You have the coverage. I know. Nobody's like, oh my God, they didn't have enough close-ups in that yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah. 0.0001% of people recognize that stuff. And it's the people working in the industry. It's right. not the people watching the casual right. show. They just need more cameras and more shit because you cannot subject people to this. Well, and if an actor has been doing a 14-hour day, like their PAs and their DP, like they've been there 18 Twice hours. As long. Like yeah. it's just Actors it's can walk off and take a little nap if they want to. The directors can't. The yeah. cameramen can't. The PAs can't. Yeah. No, no, no. Not at all. So yeah, it it's, sucks. It it's, sucks. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a really, it it's a tough, sucks. like, meh, like. All right, bummer. what's next, Grace? All right. On a lighter note, the yeah. CW has released images from season six premiere airing October 12th, teasing the return of Black Siren. So this is Arrow. He's looking good. He's, he's back in his suit. Oh, I didn't say that. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's for, there's, there, it's you know, Arrow. you guys do. You know. Uh, I think that the, probably the best picture is Black Siren versus, uh, you know, doppelganger Laurel Lance, and that maybe uh, Oliver Queen's kid is the only person left off the island that exploded. We, we don't see anybody else that was on that island as they exploded. So, I, again, they're not going to show us anything that happened, but does this also get me excited that maybe they're going to they're gonna maybe have a few episodes without the main cast in it to be like, how did they survive the blast? Where are they? How are they going to get back? That's what kind of gets me excited, as opposed to those flash images where they were like, well, bears in the speed force, here comes a samurai. <laughs> <laughs> There's my arrow. Did you just do thoughts. the rest of TV talk oh, in that go. voice? Oh, Barry, crap! Got to run faster, Barry. There's a man in a steel suit coming you for you. You sound like the grandpa from Family <laughs> the Guy. The Family Guy. <laughs> oh, hey, Peter. Yeah. Uh, Chris, come Chris. on in. <laughs> and you, he does that it's whistle. The it's the paper boss. Can you do that? He, he, Oh, God, I love it. Hey, Sinead, come on over, sweetheart. I love that so much. <laughs> All right, that's enough. What's next? <laughs> All right, and this is actually, okay, this is interesting. This is what I want to talk about. Yeah, Showtime has acquired the rights to The President is Missing, the upcoming novel by President Bill Clinton and best-selling author James Patterson that will come oh, out God. <laughs> next yes. summer. So the book hasn't even come out yet. It's going to come out next year, and this is obviously Clinton's first novel, and this is the first time an American president has ever co-authored a thriller. Yeah. I, first of all, I think this is amazing. Amazing. Uh, I think we do. Because I, I would have loved to have been the person at reception at CBS <laughs> or ABC when that Bill Clinton walks in and he's like, Hi, I'm here to see. Um, here to uh, pitch my show. Here to pitch my show. And you're like, uh, Is that Bill Clinton? And you're like, Jesus Are Christ. you? Oh my. Oh my God. Yes. And what do you need? Yeah, exactly. Are you telling me that other executives are like, I think we'll pass on the Clinton book? You're like, Oh, hell yeah. no. Right? Yeah, no, I One was reading the most they had, like, controversial, meetings. notorious presidents of all time. And now he's writing thrillers? You could write something on a napkin. They'd be like, <laughs> let's make it into a movie. Yes. And yes. I'd go see it. And yes. they're like, yeah. Uh, this is something that's just so cool because we have these a bunch of president dramas going right now. We have House of Cards, we've got Homeland, we've got all this stuff. And now we're going to have Bill Clinton actually sort of like EPing, writing, working with James Patterson on the show. It's kind of badass. Like that's a show I want to get cast on. I right? just like hang out with Bill. Yeah. That would be so dope. And how? what if like George W. Bush like, oh, but 
I'm gonna do something like Bill Clinton. I got a thirty. I got a thirty minute comedy about a family in Texas. They're like that's the ranch. Shit. All right. Uh, I got a thirty minute comedy about an animated horse. Shit. That's BoJack Horseman. Uh, I got an animated George. You're just reading off your Netflix cube, bud. You, you got He's nothing. Like, oh, 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 right, shame. right, right. Shame. Poor George. He'll never make it in show business. <laughs> Bill, though. Bill. Bill's got a promising career. Yes, he does. Bill's got moxie. If he shows up at the premiere smoking a cigar, the world will explode. Oh, that's would, awesome. Yeah, come on. That graphic, though. Come on. so good. It is. Face. Just, it's a pretty good story there, Bill. It's a pretty, pretty good story. Pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty good. All right. Uh, let's, what, move, let's, let's move on. What do you yeah. think, Grace? What do you think? Well, I just thought that we would end the news today. I have a chord problem. Carry on. Uh, with I thought a very you were going to bring a prop. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> like, are we getting a like, prop? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going to do a little bit of ventriloquism to close the show. <laughs> um, I thought we would end it on a very serious note. Um, two-time Tony Award winner Matthew Broderick will be narrating Fox's live production of the classic Midwestern Holiday tale, a Christmas story that Yay. will air December 17th. <laughs> exactly, Sinead. Yes. Ba effing humbug, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of like what I care uh, less about. Sure. Like, I, uh, like I care more about like eggshell rights. Yeah. That's the first thing I thought of. It's. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the appropriate reaction. These live performance things. Like, I can't. Where are executives clamoring around I, saying, Janet, we need another live show? She's like, Well, I was thinking we could do Christmas Story. And you're like, <laughs> We can make that live. And they're like, Could you make it a musical? Well, I could try. And they're like, Could we get Matthew Broderick? Hold on. Oh, Matthew, you up to anything? He's like, Nah, just sitting around in my weird glasses, making sure everybody thinks I'm straight. <laughs> and uh, all of, would you like to narrate the movie? Would you like to do the live show? Shame. He's like, Ralphie Parker, yeah. I don't know why Christmas he talks Story like that. is a treasured piece of classic cinema, and you're going to do the Allison Williams Peter Pan business no, to it? No, no, Josh, you're, you're we talked gonna do about this. The How Grease dare you? Live to it. You're going to do Hairspray Live to my Christmas story to Ralphie and Randy. I can't put my arm. You're going to do the live treatment to that? You're going to do a steady cam two hour show on Fox live. The parents are angry. The parents are angry. <laughs> Chinese food. Chinese food. Wait, so like when they say narrate, is he just like reading the book? He, no, he's going to be like the old, like the grown up Ralphie Parker, but it is like actually narrating. like a full on production. Yeah, like it's not they're just, turning it into like a straight play. Okay, that's what I thought. Like I was just making sure it wasn't yeah. going to be Matthew Broderick like on a stool yeah. reading a book. I mean, we don't <laughs> know that for <laughs> no, sure no, no, and no. nothing else. We don't know. You know? <laughs> it's a one woman. For, it's a one man. <laughs> <laughs> one woman. Just for a split second. That's <laughs> rude. <laughs> uh, just for a split second, Freudian slip, <laughs> I was like, Wait, hold on. But that's what I thought you meant, like a grease slide type thing. Yes, yes. God, so you're going to do it to Christmas Story. Because if you know Christmas Story, the <laughs> movie funny. has the movie has uh, a narrator who is, who is yeah. the voice of Ra the adult Ralphie, right? right? So Matthew Broderick is going to play the adult Ralphie. Now listen, Matthew Broderick, an amazing actor. Some of yeah. the most iconic roles in film history. Sometimes TV too. He doesn't have the voice for... The, the Ralphie. The Ralphie has like, is a, it's it's like a Jimmy Stewart voice. Not, hey, I'm Matthew Broderick and I was a mouse in a movie. It's, it doesn't. What mouse was he? I don't know. He was a mouse in one. Was he Stuart Little? Was he Stuart, 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 Stuart Little? Little? No, that was Michael J. Fox. That was Michael J. Fox. Oh, I always get those two confused. He was in The Producers, so I will love him forever because sure. The Producers is epic. Just wait, stop messing with my movies. Yeah, stop it's messing. just annoying. I mean, like we saw Dirty Dancing, right? Yeah. Like, what was that? Right. 100%. <laughs> I wish that, that we had one. more space in this so I could show you my Your my lift? impersonation of um, what's her face. Was it Julianne Huff who okay, played it? You can't it? like tease it and not do I don't, it. I can't who do played, it. Who played Baby in that? It was what's her face? Abigail, Abigail Breslin. Breslin. Oh, Abigail Breslin. And like her dance moves at the end are so ridiculous. They're like, it's just the worst thing ever. So I feel Wait like. Wait till you get to my wedding. Somebody. <laughs> somebody <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm going to be like, do the Abigail Breslin. Do you guys want to see a live stream of Josh's wedding <laughs> before they kick me out for live streaming his entire wedding? Um, no. But I, I will say that. Like that is where they should learn their lesson. Yes, I will say Hairspray was great, but Hairspray is a, a Broadway musical. Sure, sure. it was it was a movie first, but still, but you can't just take any random movie right. and make it into something a live steady cam. Like you just can't. stop it. Yeah, you can't. stop it. Yeah, stop it. Just you so, stop. They're so obnoxious. I've never recovered from Peter Pan. <laughs> I will never be the same person. <laughs> and I literally, I I was in Peter Pan. I I ugh. I never saw that one. Good girl. Don't. I can't. 
There aren't words. <laughs> I have what never was that been even so on? on? NBC. Wasn't it? Yeah. NBC. Hey. I don't even remember. I have Dirty never, Dancing to me was. It's like top five most offended moments of my life. My mom like was sitting there and it ends and she goes, whoever decided to make this into a live show should be shot. <laughs> my Mr. mother. Freeze going my Dio. mother. Hard. And my sister and I just looked at her and we were like, yeah, mom, you tell them. <laughs> Preach, mom. Preach. Preach, mama. All right. Uh, should we do some DeFreestyle, Grace? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I think we should do some DeFreestyle. So I've been, I've been like, yeah. okay. That's your guitar solo. Sorry. <laughs> I'll wait. <Ranted. laughs> no, I'm cool. just kidding. Um, thank you. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. So I've been pulling some quotes from um, what BuzzFeed deems some of the greatest quotes of all time okay. from TV. Okay. Most of them are um, like dramas or shows we talk about all the time. So okay. like the last five, ten years. Okay. Some of them are a little bit older. Okay. So let's, I'm just going to go through some of these. You're, okay? you're going to quiz me on them? just going to go through some of them. Okay. All right. So the first one is, you have to tell me the show. If okay. you can tell me who says it on the show, double points for you. Okay. 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 Feel okay. free to participate. Yeah. I was just, sorry. I was I looking this. at Twitter questions. Can I like, do, do we raise our hand? Do we like slap? Just yell just it out. Scream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I dig. Good. All right. I can do that. First one. It's always been you. I tried to fight it, and I've tried to deny it, and I can't do it. I can't. You're undeniable. Uh, is a it normal Ross heart? to Rachel? Wait, what did you say? A normal heart? No, we're talking TV shows. Oh, well, what? that was on HBO. Was that a... Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, sit, I'll sit myself out. <laughs> it's you. It's always been you. I, tried I didn't to listen it, to the intro. I can't. And I can't do it. I can't. You're undeniable. It's one of the most iconic duos in television. Vampire Diaries? No. More iconic than that. But... It was on the CW. Oh, uh, shoot. Uh, the Dawson, to, uh, Dawson to Joey? Joey no. to Pacey. Pacey. No, a little bit later Orange. than that. Oh, no, that's what I said. Is it, is it uh, Buffy? <laughs> what were you going to say? Orange. I said Orange County Housewives. <laughs> Orange County the or the OC. I the said OC. the OC. You did? Yeah. And no. then I started to say Orange, and then I was you, like, oh, I just said that. You said Orange, but then. No, I said OC Orange. Oh, okay. The OC. So is I got the, the point. Is, is that what the you're saying? You did it, get it. Is it Ben to Marissa? <laughs> no. God, you suck at this. Okay, no, give us the next one. We're going <laughs> to redeem ourselves. Oh, it's, um, it's, this is fun. I like summer this. Summer to Seth. Seth to Summer. It's Seth to Summer, yeah. Ooh, okay, good ready? Okay. I've never seen the show. He's trying to force you to like normal things, and you shouldn't like things because people tell you you're supposed to. This is a very recent TV show. Speechless? Mm -mm. Speechless. <laughs> Why is that not a good catch? Just like one of the more unquotable shows. Yes, totally. 100%. Speechless. I got nothing on Now we know that what Grace is doing every Wednesday night. <laughs> but on her jammies. I, I've, I've I only really like that pilot, show. But I loved Speechless it. Speechless is great. Um, that is Stranger Things. Oh. Jonathan Bach. Ah, I should have seen right. that uh, coming. It's okay. so similar to Speechless, right. though. I can see how Never I... forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor, and it can never be used to hurt you. Oh, Ooh. Game of Thrones. Um, it's uh, uh, Jamie to Tyrion. It's Tyrion. It's just Tyrion. Yeah, but yes. good job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Damn. Josh, right. yeah. coming in hot. If I had known the last time I saw you would be the last time, I would have stopped to memorize your face. The way you move everything about you. If I had known the last time I kissed you would have been the last time, I never would have stopped. I mean, that sounds like the notebook, uh, but I've, is it at a I've, funeral? It's got to be at like I've a funeral, it. right? No, it's some, it's a Wait, reunion. Wait, give us like a hint. It's a reunion. It's a reunion. The show or the scene or the episode. Gilmore Girls. Scene, is it Gilmore Girls? The scene, the episode is a reunion. What like genre? What network? Um, <laughs> uh, give it away because I only know it on is one this, network. Is this Dawson's Creek? No. Well, in Chicago, it played on WGN. Uh, no. Salem. Now it plays on every channel. <laughs> TBS, TNT. Is it Friends? Yes. Oh, Do you man. know who it is? Aww. It's not one of the. It's not one of the. But it is one of the most iconic scenes. Is it? Is it the the guy that? Is it Hank Azaria to Phoebe when he comes back? <gasps> it is to Phoebe, and it's, it's. But it's the. It's Mike Hannigan. It's, it's Paul Rudd. It's Paul Rudd. Oh, it's Paul Rudd. Man. He says it when she's about to marry. Um, what's his face? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. She's yes. about to get back together. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I'm that one. Guys... Let's do two more. Okay. Let me go back here. <laughs> All right. KJ Ippa. <laughs> KJ Ippa. Let's see here. Peanut butter. Okay. Peanut I don't know butter. if you guys have seen Kiwi? these shows. Chips. Bright. Australia. Beach is bright. <laughs> okay, here's Sydney. one. Sydney. <laughs> the way I see it, every life is a pile of good things and bad things. The good things don't always soften the bad things, but vice versa, the bad things don't necessarily spoil the good things and make them unimportant. It's got to be like a dad, right? 
Goldberg's? Friday Night Lights? Ooh, Friday Night Lights. It's a little more deeper than... Oh, Parenthood. It's more... Mm. It's this more. Is Us? No. Fuck. It's actually not like oh. a, a romance at all. Damn. What is it? Should I just like look it's, up the same quiz and cheat like an <laughs> asshole? <laughs> it's uh, I'm like I'm Dr. looking up Twitter Who. questions. It's Doctor Who. It's Doctor oh, Who. you know I've not watched Emma Doctor Who. Oh, let's do one more. What do you say, um, okay. Yep. This is fun. This a, is like yeah, waking like, me I up. Know, there was such a really good one, but it wasn't on this one. I had it on my computer before it died. But hold, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it. <laughs> Sinead DeFreeze loves when her computer dies. That's why she keeps it on for the two hours before the show. Sorry, guys. Hold on. It's really good, though, because it was kind of funny. So well, do you want me to do a Twitter question while you find it? Yes, that's okay. right. Let's do a Twitter question. Um, so we're going to go with our friend at Crown Royal 007. I Ooh, see what you did nice. there. I like so Crown my Royal. question of the day is, what feature film actors would you like to see take on a new starring role on TV slash Netflix? Well, I mean, I loved TV. all the girls that did Big Little Lies, like Reese Witherspoon, Nicole yeah. Kidman, da 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 I, I, I know I say this a ton, but I would like to see Jennifer Lawrence in a TV show. Yeah. I'd like to see what she does. She was My favorite Jennifer Lawrence role of, is Winter's Bone. She is. Mm. She's not Jennifer Lawrence yet in Winter's yeah, Bone, I and I love that Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, I would love to see Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, like he's so talented and so underrated, and he's so his reputation is so on point. Like he's such a generous actor. And like, the sister's been in two successful series now. She's in The Deuce, and she was just and she was in uh, The Honorable Woman, which was on um, yeah, Sundance Channel. Yeah, which was fantastic. Very, her so. British accent is spot on. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Got yeah. A good there, I mean, there's siblings they're talented yeah, they're talented good people. but i want to i just i i, He's bubble I, boy. I miss never him. forget bubble boy i miss him i, I yeah. miss a gyllenhaal he I was creating oak which was a netflix movie but still it's netflix. like i don't know if you've guys seen his new film october sky he's just great oh, in that. october sky <laughs> warner von brown so good so good all right, all right let's did do you find it you got it all right, let's do it <clears throat> if you want the rainbow you've got to put up with the rain do you know which philosopher said that dolly parton and people say she's just a big pair of tits orange is the new black uh, House of Cards. Uh, 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 Anybody from the peanut gallery? Mm. Cody. It is The Office. Oh, my Cody. goodness. Cody Hall. <laughs> Cody Good Hall. Job. That one dude, I've Cody, on Twitter. I've never been so attracted oh, to you, Cody. My that was goodness. amazing. Or wait, are you, are you Cody, Cody Hall? Cody knows everything about everything. Have you noticed that? Yeah. It's, he's our he friendly knows neighborhood everything. ninja. I know. He's, that's why he's my fantasy update broheem in companionship. It's crazy. I know. <laughs> All right. I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna put together like I feel like for freestyle we should just do like from Quizzes. here on out we should do like every Friday I'll, I'll put together like a, a, a certain era of television like yeah. 2000 2005 2005 2010 and then we'll just make up I'll just put together like trivia questions I love that this is literally it. I'm so pumped yes. we, we, can, should like, get, arm wrestle. we should get yes. Cody get on so here yeah. too, we'll get Cody I know what the Co hell we'll Cody get a mic is? back there for Cody and Adam to get to like be on Cody the mic I Cody was just like smoking yeah. a pipe back there the whole time like these newbies these I know he knows everything so That's hap that happens every single time right he always is like knows the people that we can't get to their names we're all just He's a living in Cody it's Hall's crazy. beautiful world. And of he looks royalty. like freaking Spider Man. I know. He's really got it all going for you, he don't does. you? And he's getting married he's in getting a month married or two. So soon. Love the kid. Love all it. All right. Uh, let's do a <laughs> of the day. All right. If you could pick any city other than LA or New York to set a show in, what would it be? I would pick <laughs> I would pick my hometown of Prescott because weird shit goes down. Right. And like just weird shit. We, we were talking about this yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Like it's like a, like big cities. Small it's towns. Like, meh. like I feel like the nobody center. that I know in LA, it's like, yeah, it's meh. But then it's like small towns where there's like 10 people. It's like it's all weird. Yes. Agreed. It's like, yeah. Sinead? So, yeah. This is so random. And I'm not trying to offend anybody that lives in Branson, Missouri. <laughs> But I would 100% set a TV show in Branson, Missouri. Branson is Missouri. awesome. Well, it's like everyone there is so the same. It's kind of crazy, you know? Like, I remember visiting there and just being like, whoa, this is your quintessential Midwest town. Uh -huh. where people don't really leave, you know? Like, you yes. stay there, you live there, everyone knows each other. Oh, God. Um, but everybody looks the same. It's so weird. <laughs> like, physically, or they, like, act the same? Everything. Everything about that place. And Silver Dollar City, their theme park where I've been to Branson a couple times. Have you been to Silver Dollar City? Yes. It's like the, it's a theme park, so it has like rides and stuff. Like one of the attractions inside the Silver Dollar City when I went was like a goat milking station. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, baby, this yes. is not Six Flags. Like, <laughs> they are milking some freaking goats. <laughs> <laughs> this poor goats, like, I did not sign up for this shit. Yeah. Like, that's a lot to take in. See, for me, like, obviously people are like, oh, it's going to say Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh is an amazing city, an amazing city to have a show set in, but nobody does the accents well, and no show could be based on the accents because people would tune out immediately. They're amazing accents, but people can't handle them. Uh, but Sam Worthington, I hear, is available, so you yeah, could probably you nail could, it. You could probably nail that <laughs> accent. I would go, like, a, a New Jersey beach town but not the new jersey shore beach town one of the quieter ones and during the off season when there's only like four, two or three hundred hey, people that live on the island and what their lives are like because weird things can happen are they like bringing in weird like drugs from the shore through the bay like God, there's I a lot of so. stuff that could happen because it's so quiet and yeah. there's like two cops that live there and nice. they're like in on it yeah because i i lived in a jersey shore town one time from january to february because i had to like help a yeah. friend build it and it's it's creepy. Yeah, it's awesome. there were a couple of shows that like that. There, they they set them in other other yeah, beach yeah. cities along the Jersey Shore. Um, but I I love shows like that. I know. We right? should pitch it to Bill creepy. Clinton, you guys. Yes, we should. I think we should. Edi editor in chief. <laughs> See what All you, right. can, you can executive <laughs> produce like anything. Yeah, honestly, right? executive in chief. All right, I'll quit. Sinead, <laughs> where can the good people find you on the internet? I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that's so Sinead.com. Um, I will see you guys back here next Friday, and then I get to go watch Josh get married. <laughs> and I'm so excited. I'm going to cry like a little bitch. Um, but I won't see you again, right? Until, until the wedding. Until your wedding day? Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> I know all the feels. Grace face. Um, I just want you guys to know I actually have milked a goat, and I'm not sorry. Um, and you can find me milk online. Every, I've milked a goat um, at a goat milking. It's station. a very strange. It was a. It was. <laughs> tweet me. Tweet me your questions about goat milking. Um, you can find me online everywhere at Mrs. Grace face. I will see you next week, and yep. then I also will see you at your wedding. Boom. 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 I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. Guys, tomorrow, 2 p.m. on Travel Channel, 11 a.m. PST, Yay. depending on your cable provider. I'm hosting a show called Epic Happy Hours. If you guys watch, you share, just tag Travel Channel. Tell them you love Woo. it. Tell them you like it. We'll probably review it on Monday. Go full meta on a Collider TV mm -hmm. talk. And uh, mention Josh's name in every tweet. Please, just tag it. Love it. Um, I appreciate all that you've done so far. It's really making a guy feel pretty humble. Uh, I'm not going to cry, I promise. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Honestly, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. It really makes a guy feel pretty special. So, as always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey, everybody, Josh McCuga here. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Collider TV Talk. Want to watch more episodes? Click there. It's a, an interactive link. Or for more Collider content, click down there. Subscribe to the channel. Tell all your friends. Get an airplane. Drive it by that says Collider. I'm not telling you to buy an airplane. Just do whatever you want as long as you're watching Collider videos.